Hey everyone, this is the Black Manga Critic here with another video for Weekly Shonen Jump Thursdays. Now basically this is going to be a review of Boku no Hero um, Academia Chapter 150. And this is a good chapter. Um, so, but, but before I get into the chapter, just want to say if you're new to the channel, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell button when you do. Follow me on Twitter and like the page on Facebook. So with that being said, um, basically what I want to talk about in terms of this chapter is how, again... Hori Koshi is really um, sort of putting down what it means to be a hero in particular situations in his narrative and what it means to be a Yakuza in particular situations in his narrative. So when we're looking at this chapter, we see that Mirio rushes in like he's a hero. He's got to save this girl. And I think one thing about the, um, the chapter that I really like is that he zeroes in on another thing, right? Like one, one thing... Um, heroes are going to rush in. That's what they do, right? Deku told us this. All Might told us this. Other heroes have told, have told us this. They, their feet move before they can even think, right? Like, and this is something that happens. Mira's just rushing in. And this is, and, and it's like, okay, that's cool um, as, a, as a quality to have, right? Because you need that um, to be a quality hero. But it's also very, it, it, it can also be detrimental in particular situations. When we're looking at this situation, it is indeed detrimental. Why? Because if, um, you know, Mirio, like, right, Mirio charges in, but he's by himself. There aren't any other heroes to help him. Um, they're much further away because he, you know, took a shortcut, basically, right? Chisaki tells us that he probably took a shortcut. Well, Mirio tells us that he took a shortcut. And Chisaki's like, oh, okay. Already the gears are starting to turn in Chisaki's head, right? He understands how heroes work. He understands that, one, they're going to rush in. Two, maybe they do have a plan. But they're not as organized as an organization like the Yakuza are. So what happens is Mirio is a hero and he rushes in. And um, Chisaki is not a hero and he's pretty much planned out multiple scenarios. So what happens in this scenario, in this situation, right, in Hodokoshi's narrative, um, well, yeah, narrative, right, is that um, Mirio is pretty much outnumbered, right? And even though these um, um, sort of Yakuza individuals aren't as battle um, ready or even like, like you know, or don't have as much battle talent as Mirio does, um, Mirio has trouble with them. Why? Because he's a hero. And yes, the truth teller um, Yakuza, right, who's able to sort of pull the truth out of individuals, individuals does tell us that heroes, um, well, not even heroes, but, like, people, right, always have, like, things that they're not, you know, honest about or truthful about or whatever, and that weighs them down and things of that nature. But particularly, heroes have a whole bunch of baggage that they're always holding on to. You know, All Might's constantly walking around with, you know, uh, with baggage. Um, you know, um, what, what, what other heroes? Uh, um, Todoroki's father. I don't know why I can't remember his name. Um, you know, but, uh, he's walking around with baggage, right? Um, best genius is probably walking around with baggage. You know what I mean? So like this stuff like that, that, um, consistently, um, is sort of shown by Hodokoshi to be true. Heroes come with baggage. Um, so when we um, are looking at this chapter, we do see that like Mirio, um, struggles because he, he has his own baggage and we understand that the only way that he's going to be able to sort of, um, you know, deal with this battle is that if he sort of understands that there's only one way to get over that baggage and that's to sort of fix things, right? So once he understands that he has to fix things and that he has to sort of, you know, sort of repent in a sense in saving this, um, saving Chisaki's daughter, then the battle goes the way that it should go, right? The hero swoops in, quickly dispatches the, um, the two Yakuza um, um, guys, and then Mirio moves on to fight um, Chisaki. So, in this instance, right, um, with the battle, we see that, like, heroes, you know, rush in to their, you know, can often rush in to their detriment, and in particular situations, rushing in does not help, and heroes have baggage. So, because heroes have baggage, certain situations, um, you know, that's helpful because it helps them to sort of move forward and help them persevere, but in this situation, it hindered him in the battle. And he could have lost and he could have got, you know, shot in the head or something like that because he just was you know, he wasn't focused. He wasn't paying attention to certain things like that. And I don't think he was like in deep, deep trouble, but he definitely was struggling. So when it comes to Shisaki, right, as a Yakuza in this particular situation, 
Shisaki has clearly planned things out, right? He's been he he's walked with um this particular um truth teller uh yakuza and another yakuza. I can't remember what that what that um um other yakuza's um quirk is, but basically we understand that this truth teller is able to sort of manipulate individuals, right? And Shisaki understands that like he doesn't necessarily even need um the truth teller to beat um these heroes. He just needs them to he just needs them to stall like to stall them, right? Because that's like his basically been his plan. His plan has basically just been like, hey, here are all these Yakuza that can stall people, right? Um some of them are very good at like battle, like um Rapa. Um, but most of them that we've seen for the most part have been individuals that are good for stalling, that are good for defense, right? Inunaka, um, which is a um um Tengai, right? Like 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 individuals like that who are very good at stalling. So Shizaki is being the organizational organizational mind that he is, right, is able to plan for a situation such as this one. So that's why this works, right? He's able to sort of say, oh, regardless of what hero comes through or what hero, whichever hero reaches first, I will plan accordingly, right? So I think as a Yakuza, this situation works for him because he's, you know, it's almost like not it's it well actually it's almost um that not that the situation works for him but that he's made the situation right like he's actually sort of built this situation so um the heroes are kind of like you know just kind of almost like they're on his board game and he's like controlling like them as as pawns and it's just like you know he doesn't need like he doesn't even need to sort of like necessarily like he he probably already has planned for situations but he's constructed these situations um, so that regardless of whatever hero sort of comes in and rushing in to save the day and comes in with that baggage, he's had, he's, he has an individual or individuals, right? That can solve these heroes in various ways. I also like the way that, um, yeah, like Horikoshi ended the chapter, right? Horikoshi ended the chapter by saying like, yeah, here comes Mirio to save the day, right? Like Mirio's coming to save the day, right? And that's, and that's cool. It's a great, like, um, panel shot and everything like that. The art is wonderful. Horikoshi does, you know, great art and the art looks really cool there and like crisp and sharp and it's, and it, and it works well to sort of show Mirio as, um, a hero, right? In a sort of all might kind of vein, right? In that, in terms of that art. But, um, what we understand is that the battle is not over. This is the thing, right? When we're, whenever we're reading Shonen, um, Shonen Jump and particularly just like just general, um, battle Shonen manga, the battle's not over until it's clearly over. And this battle is not over. So we understand that even though Mirio did some cool stuff and grabbed um, Chisaki's daughter, we know we know that like Chisaki, you know, he's got a plan, like right, like he didn't beat um, Rapa um, easily for no reason. So we know that that's coming. And I think that that again showcases just how much sort of the Yakuza, right? Like as a character in Horikoshi's narrative, the Yakuza is a character that is ready for the next chapter and the next few chapters. The hero is um, reactionary. The hero is like, I'm running in. I'm going to, you know, react to the situation that I'm in. And, you know, hopefully things work out if I try hard enough and I think a little bit. But the Yakuza is like, no, like, like, Mirio is like, this chapter I got to do everything that I can and I got to be a hero and blah, blah, blah. And Shisaki in this chapter is like, there are other chapters. There are other situations that are coming up. There are other scenarios that are coming up. So I think in that way, it's very much a kind of almost meta, um, it's a sort of meta narrative in, in, um, in a sense. And yeah, yeah, in the sense that like it very much so says like, you know, um, Yakuza are aware that situations um, are yet to come and heroes are very much so in the moment, right? And if we're looking at a battle Shonen Jump manga, we understand that, you know, um, the characters are sort of very much in the moment, right? And the chapter is very much so in that particular moment. But as readers, we understand that there are other chapters coming up and the battle is not done. So that's all I pretty much got to say about this chapter. I thought it was a great, great, great chapter. Again, Horikoshi is doing great writing. The writing is like, phew, it skyrocketed since like the first maybe, I don't know, I want to say like um, 25, 30, 30 chapters or so. Um, it's just like shot right up. Like it's just really, really, really good writing. I, um, um, it's a, it, it's again, like this is why I always say that like Broken Hero clearly is going to be a pillar of jump because um, not only has 
doesn't have the sort of like you know qualities that it needs but the writing has really improved since um the sort of early days so basically that's my review of boku no hero academia chapter 150 look out for another review of like other shonen jump manga um today and i'm the black manga critic signing out